it's not even 24 hours since this revolutionary email hit my mailbox where Pix Inside announced that they have a lot of news. And as a main thing, they introduced the spectrophotometry based color calibration. And I could easily put as clickbait the phrase that changes everything on my cover because it changes everything, but not really in a good way. It just changed so much within Pix Inside that some people are excited, some people are frustrated, some people are confused. So, whatever your feeling is, in the following tutorial, I will show you everything that I have learned within these 24 hours. That said, and just to be clear, also I just got the chance to actually test the whole thing 24 hours ago. So I think our goal for today is to understand what spectrophotometry based color calibration is, how we're using it, but in principle, how we're getting picks inside to run again for our day-to-day -day workflows. And then all the flashy details and all the real use cases, tips and tricks, that's probably which will take a few weeks or months to go. And now, let's go. So, welcome to my new Pix Insight. So here we have it, the spectrophotometric color calibration, side by side with the photometric color calibration, which still exists, but which also looks different now. And so I think the first question you might have is, what changed? Now there is a document which describes all of that. It was included link in the email that they send around, but I will also put it in the description down below. So that here is this document. It is extremely lengthy, but you probably will need it if you really want to deep dive into this topic because it's an extremely complex topic. So kind of what they describe is, and I think that's the main takeaway, until now the A-Pass catalog was used for the photometric color calibration. And what they state is that the new Gaia catalog that is used is much more powerful and much more accurate, or that at least to get the much more accurate results out of it, given that it's based on spectrophotometry. And then they really go at length to actually explain here with tons of formulas and graphs, how they created and calculated everything. And quite honestly, if you do not have a doctorate degree, I don't know, at least for me, it's, it's just a little bit too complex. And I also believe that I can process my pictures without understanding all of that. But I think much more relevant than to some parts, we will go into that through the tutorial, is that based on if you use narrowband or broadband or mono, different parameters have to be set in the tool to work as good as possible. And that's all described down here in the, in the second part. And I think there it gets really important that you can enter the things exactly to your equipment and your situation. But let's now go back to Pix Insight. Now, the first thing you need to know is that the spectrophotometric color calibration runs. You need actually the Gaia DR3SP catalog. And you really need that physically. So it's not like in the photometric color calibration where it will access the net and download it. So where can you find it? You have actually to go to Bix Insight, to the homepage, and then click on the software distribution. You have to log in with your password and user ID. And then here you will see it, Gaia DR3SP complete set and Gaia DR3SP small set. Now small is relative. Small is already about 11 gigabytes and the big one is 60 gigabytes or something. So it's huge. And presently, because everybody's like downloading it, it takes some time. I had a few hours ago, no issues downloading it. It was slow, but it was working. 
but you hear other reports of people where it fails. So um, you need to try it. Now, should you take the small one or the complete set? Pix Insight says the small one is the minimal requirement, but they recommend the complete set for the best performance of this new process. Now, the good news is that you do not have to have it on your main hard drive. So I, for example, put it on an external hard drive and it works fine, as long as it's obviously always connected on the, and on the same path. So once you have downloaded that, you throw it in a directory of your liking. Then in Pix Inside, you go to Process, Astrometry, and Gaia. In here, you go to the wrench, ensure that here data releases Gaia DR3 SP. And now you click Select. You go to your directory, select it all, and click Open. Then you click OK. And that's it. Now it's in there, and now you can use it. You can close that down again. Now you might discover that you have no place anymore where you could actually enter the object that you made a photo of, the coordinates. It's just like, like gone. But you might think good news. Now they can simply detect that. They just plate solve it and they figure it out themselves. You open a picture and you throw it on there. Um, it says the image has no valid astrometric solution. Full stop, failed. So what happens? Your little illusion breaks down and you realize that actually you have to plate solve it before you even go now in one of these processes. And that's the thing that really blows my mind. I don't get it why they did it like that. So what they did, they actually included in the stacking script in the WBPP, they included there the plate solving. So if you stack within Pix Insight, it plate solves it right away. Sounds great, first of all, if you stack within Pix Insight, and B, if it plate solves it correctly. And knowing my experiences from the photometric color cam calibration, there were quite some times where it failed the first time. Be it that you just put a date or, a, or something wrong in, or because something else. And I don't know how, what then actually happens, what an error message will come up, but then you still have to find another way to plate solve it. And obviously, if you stack like me outside of Pix Insight, you just cannot proceed. So how do you plate solve your picture? That's now the first thing that has to be on your mind before we even can go to any color calibration. So how do we do the plate solving? We use for that the script. We go to script, image analysis, and then image solver. So as long as we want to use the picture, which is anyway active, we keep it on active window. We now type on search, we enter M16, and you see it even finds it under different names. Eagle Nebula, Messier 16, doesn't matter, both the same. We say, okay. So for that, we have now the coordinates. Now the time we have to change. So this was in June when this was done on the 16th. Time is fine. It seems to already detect, or it took it from somewhere, but it already has in here the right pixel size, the right resolution or focal distance, so this is fine. And that's already everything, so just click OK. And we're waiting. OK, and it's done. And if you move a little bit up, we see these nice little green lines who say successful astrometry optimization. So with that, our picture is now ready for any color calibration that you want to do. So once we have done the plate solving, we can now start. And we start with the photometric color calibration, just as a comparison. We know that already. There's no plate solving anymore, given that it's already done externally. So all we have to do, throw the triangle on there and try it. And I labeled this PCC, so that we know afterwards that what was done. And here we go. Photometric color calibration was done successfully. We close that down. We simply restretch that. And for the moment, we can minimize it. So now let's go to the new kit on the block, which is the spectrophotometric color calibration. And let, let's look at each little tiny bit here. Let's start with a white reference. As a default, it's by average spiral galaxy. And what this means is that Pix Inside believes that in an average spiral galaxy, 
the distribution of the color of stars is about even so that it serves well as a white reference. Now, based on some exceptions, you will have to change that and you can change it with a lot of settings. So what is all this? With the stars, the B or the F and so on, this is the classification of the color of a star. So for example, B is a light blue star, F is a slight yellow star, G is a very yellow star, and M, for example, is a very red star. Now the other classifications behind that, the number and then the Roman number, I don't know what it is and I couldn't find it. And if someone knows what this is, I would be, not probably for this purpose here, but generally I would be interested. So please leave it in the comments below. When we go to the galaxies, we also have classifications of different galaxies, while some um, describe rounder spiral galaxies, some describe more elliptic galaxies, which are more fuzzy and not so much with spiral arms. There is one exception. If you're shooting color, do a narrow band photography, choose the photon flux. I choose that. And that is the only exception that is described in the documentation. And we'll see if anybody comes up with time with recommendations here, what else to choose. QE curves, it's the quantum efficiency of your device, of your camera, which when I present you now the options, would you know? I don't really. So I'll stay with the ideal QE curve. That's anyway what they recommend for narrowband photography. Also here, I would hope that with time, there's more recommendation. If you have this and this camera, you should choose this or something like that. For the moment, just keep it at ideal QE curve. Then we come to the filters. And here it gets interesting. If you're shooting color without a narrowband filter, then these settings are the right ones for you. So just leave it. If you shoot mono, then open it and look for your mono filter. So it has Sony, it's an Optolong, Nikon, Bader, and Clear, and so on. So just for each of the three colors, choose the filter that you use. Last but not least, if you shoot color narrow band, then click on this selection box. Then you have to enter here the wavelength and the bandwidth. And with dual narrow band, it's HA, so 656 for red, actually for five nanometer bandwidth for Mount Leo. So I correct that here. And then the green and the blue is O3. If you have primarily stars in your picture, then choose here, optimize for stars. If your main object is a huge nebula, like here in this picture, then just leave it unselected. With that, we're finished here. Let's go down, catalog search. Catalog is only Gaia at the moment, and it has to be downloaded. When we go further down, signal evaluation, just leave it like it is. And background neutralization, you can either leave it or actually narrow it more down or select with a preview region of interest and use that as reference. Once this is all done, we're fine. Let's throw it on there and see if we see a difference to the photometric color calibration. Okay, looks very nice. So also here we do a restretch and now let's clean the stage for the two pictures. Okay, here we go. On the left side, PCC. On the right side, SPCC. Now I looked at it for quite some time and I also created here some previews and I compared it here and even on my screen. I know on YouTube it's always difficult, but even on my screen, I cannot see a single little bit of a difference. It's 100% identical. And I did it actually before this tutorial already with a star cluster and I had exactly the same outcome. I couldn't see any difference at all. Now, before somebody <laughs> wants to kill me, I don't say SPCC is bad. I don't say it's useless. All I say is in this first moment, I cannot see a difference. And I believe given the complexity of the tool, it probably will need some time and some further guidance and some fine tuning that we can really exploit the potential of it. And I think that leads me also again back to what I told you at the beginning. 
I think the crucial part for, for me and probably also for you was at this time to ensure that we can all work with pigs inside again in the manner we were used to. And I hope with this tutorial, I was enabling you to do right that. Now in the following weeks and months, we probably figure out together the real advantages of SPCC and how to fully exploit them. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Now there is one last bit I wanna give you on your way. In the manual, it also tells that if you do Hubble Pallet, you shall not use this tool. You should go with a regular color calibration because it seems to give some very odd results if you go with Hubble Pallet into the SPCC. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and click the subscribe button. See you next time and clear skies.